Hi everyone, I'm here to talk about our recent work, Cross Pairwise Ranking for Unbiased Item Recommendation. This is a work by Wan Qi, He Xiangnan, Wang Xiang, Wu Jiancai, Guo Wei, Tang Ming. This work aims to alleviate a severe problem exhibited by many recommender systems, the popularity bias. We first illustrate how popularity bias arises in recommender systems. User interactions like clicks or purchases of products are collected as observational data to train the recommender model. Then the trained model shows top key recommendations to the users. During this process, different items get different exposure probabilities. In most cases, popular items are more likely to be recommended to users. Under this biased exposure mechanism, the user behaviors would also bias towards popular items. Most recommender systems optimize their model on such observational data without considering the bias, so the trained model would inherit or even amplify the bias. As a result, only a few popular items take up more and more exposure opportunities, severely hurting the recommendation quality on other items. Here we formalize how the exposure mechanism brings the bias into observational data. First, we introduce three binary variables, the interaction YUI, the relevance RUI, and the observation OUI. An interaction happens only when the user both likes and observes the item. So the interaction probability equals the joint probability of relevance and observation, which further equals the product of relevance probability and the probability of observation conditioned on relevance. We call the second term the exposure probability. Since the exposure probability is generally higher for popular items, they appear more frequently in observational data. And eventually, these popular items will dominate the model training and lead to the popularity bias. One mainstream solution is inverse propensity scoring. IPS reweights the data samples with estimated propensity scores, but since the previous exposure mechanism is unknown, propensities are difficult to estimate. This line of work aims to achieve an unbiased expectation of loss, but meanwhile, the variance of loss is quite large after reweighting, which hurts the model performance. Variance reduction techniques have to be applied to trade off between the, the unbiasedness and the, uh, and the variance. In order to avoid these inherent problems of IPS, we take a new perspective on popularity bias. We denote the true relevance score as SUI, which is the natural log of the relevance probability. We denote the predicted relevance score as S hat UI. It is typically obtained by feeding the user and item embeddings into an interaction function like in a product or neural network. Now we give our definition of unbiasedness from the ranking perspective. A loss function L is unbiased if it optimizes the ranking of predicted user item relevance scores towards that of the true relevance scores. Based on this definition, we will analyze the biasness of mainstream loss functions. Pointwise loss, like binary cross entropy, BCE, and pairwise loss, like Bayesian personalized ranking, uh, BPR, are the most commonly used loss functions. BCE aims to capture the user preference on single items while minimizing the prediction discrepancy. It can be seen as a binary classification task 
between the relevant scores of positive pairs and negative pairs. BPR models the user preference on two items. It encourages the prediction of the positive item to be higher than that of the negative item for each user. Now we consider what the real training objective looks like. Given the observational data, in order to maximize the probability of observing these interactions, we should do a binary classification of the interaction variable YUI. Guided by this objective, we can prove that the pointwise and pairwise losses both encourage the predicted score S hat UI to fit the true score plus the natural log of exposure probability. Since the exposure probability tends to be higher for popular items, after the model training, the ranking of predicted scores would be biased compared to the ranking of true scores. Now we propose our solution, CPR loss. Its unbiasedness can be theoretically proved under a reasonable assumption. Each training sample of CPR consists of two users and two items. We construct a sample by selecting two positive user item pairs, U1, I1, and U2, I2, such that U1, I2, and U2, I1 are two negative pairs. Here, positive means that we have observed an interaction between the user and the item, and negative means they haven't interacted. We compute the difference between the sum score of the positive pairs and the sum score of the negative pairs, and we compute their, their, their difference and pass it into a sigmoid function and get the negative natural log value as the loss. So CPR loss encourages the sum score of these two positive pairs to be higher than that of the two negative pairs. We will explain why this ranking objective is unbiased. To demonstrate its unbiasedness, we first make a mild assumption on the exposure probability. We assume that it can be factorized into three terms, user-specific propensity, item-specific propensity, and a power function of the user-item relevance. User-specific propensities and item-specific propensities are generally higher for active users and popular items. And the power of the relevance probability is a positive constant. It, it reflects that higher relevance can, contrib can contribute more to the exposure probability. The propensities and the alpha value are all unknown values. With this assumption, we can prove that the, the unbiased ranking can be written in the following three forms. For the pointwise and the pairwise forms, the unknown propensities exist in the inequalities for uh, the unbiased ranking. But commonly used pointwise and pairwise losses just ignore them, which results in the popularity bias. But, but as for the third form, the cross-pairwise form, the propensities and also the alpha no longer exist in the ranking inequality. And this form of ranking is exactly the same as the ranking of predicted scores encouraged by CPR loss. So the resultant recommendations of CPR would be unbiased. The CPR loss we just talked about only used two observed interactions to form a training sample. We now extend it to k interactions. These graphs from left to right um, illustrate the composition of a training sample with two, three, and k interactions, respectively. The red lines denote positive pairs, and the blue ones are negative pairs. We make sure these 
users and items can form k positive pairs and also k negative pairs. And then we take the sum score of all positive pairs and the sum score of all negative pairs, compute their difference. Scale is valued by dividing it by k and compute the CPR loss. It can be proved in a similar way as before that this loss function is still unbiased. In order to speed up the training and also improve the model performance, we designed a dynamic sampling strategy to generate the training samples. Inspired by DNS, a sampling strategy for BPR, we designed a sampling strategy for CPR that assigns the heart samples with higher sampling probabilities to train them more frequently. For sample SJ, we measure its training difficulty by the value of the difference between the sum scores of uh, the sum score of positive pairs and that of negative pairs, dividing by k. Uh, the smaller this value is, the harder this sample is. We use beta to denote our uh, dynamic sampling rate, and we only use the hardest one in beta of the selected data as training samples. Now we present our experiments. We use three real-world datasets, Movie Last 10 Million, Netflix Prize, and Alibaba iFashion. To evaluate the debiasing approaches, we create simulated unbiased data by lowering the sampling rate of popular items and divide these data into validation and testing sets. We measure the model's performances by recall and NDCG, and also measure their biasness by their average recommendation popularity. We compare the proposed CPR loss with traditional methods, including BPR and multi-VAE, and debiasing approaches, including COS-E, RELF-MF, UBPR and DICE. This table is the overall comparison. CPR is a proposed method, and CPR RAND means CPR without dynamic sampling. From these results, we can see that the CPR RAND beats all the baselines on MovieLens and Netflix and achieves better overall performance on iFashion. And with the help of dynamic sampling, CPR further improves performances on all datasets. Now we compare the training efficiency of CPR with other methods. First, we show the recall curves of CPR and all the baselines. The red line is CPR. It converges to the best performance with the least number of epochs. And below is the total training time comparison of all methods. The rightmost column is CPR. It takes much less time compared to DICE, the purple column, which is the strongest baseline in previous experiments. Then we have a closer look at the debiasing ability of CPR. We divide all items into four groups by sorting them by, the, by their degrees in the ascending order and group them such that the sum degrees in each group are approximately equal. The lines of training set and testing set in the figures show the percentage of degrees contained in each group, and the columns of each method show the percentage of recommended items of each group. For the testing set, uh, the percentage of recommended items decreases as the group ID increases, since popular items are downsampled in the testing set. For an unbiased recommendation, its recommendation distribution is expected to match the distribution of the testing set. From these figures, we can see that CPR and DICE achieve the best debiasing effect. They recommend more items from unpopular groups, making the distribution closer to the testing set distribution. 
We also examine the generalization ability of CPR on different backbones, including right GCN, NeurMF, and NGCF. And we also try to amplify or reduce the data bias of the training set. And under all of these circumstances, CPR consistently performs better than the baselines, showing a good generalization ability. To sum up, in this work, we first analyze the biasness of mainstream loss functions from a new ranking perspective, showing that the optimized recommendations towards a biased ranking of user preference. Then we propose a new unbiased method, CPR. As for future directions, we hope to find a more general assumption of exposure probability to better reflect the real exposure mechanism. And we also plan to extend CPR to other scenarios like alleviating the group fairness bias. Thank you. Our codes and datasets are available online. Please have a look at our paper and codes if you are interested. Thanks for your attention.